Joining us this morning is Marvin Cohen, University of California, Berkeley. Marvin is the 2014 MRS Von Hippel Award winner. Congratulations, Marvin. That is a huge honor. Thank you. That's MRS's highest honor. So tell me how you learned that you were this year's recipient. Well, they were trying to contact me by phone, but we had some difficulty, and then I ended up getting an email. I was very excited. I'm very proud to be the 2014 Von Hippel Award winner. Yeah, as we said, it is quite an honor. Now, your award talk is titled Explaining and Predicting the Properties of Materials Using Quantum Theory. Can you give us a quick thumbnail sketch of that? I'll tell a little bit about what I do and people doing what I do do in the sense that uh, we're theoretical physicists. So it's mostly pencil and paper and computers. We try to explain the properties of materials and we try to predict the existence of new materials that are later discovered in the laboratory. We try to predict new properties and we use quantum theory to do this. Now there's been around 100 years from when we first started to understand the atomic nature of matter to today. So take us through some of the evolution during that time. I imagine you've experienced a lot of advances both in theory and technology. Right. I haven't been around for a hundred years, but... <laughs> None of us have. Back around, let's say, uh, 1905. That was Einstein's miraculous year when he made all these incredible discoveries. There were people around who still didn't believe in the existence of atoms. Now, the concept of an atom goes all the way back to the Greeks. Mm -hmm. But the idea that macroscopic matter was made out of atoms was something not everyone was comfortable with. But Einstein, and it was his thesis actually, he measured the size of sugar molecules. And that added a lot to the concept that atoms do exist. Also Brownian motion. These are the little jigglings of dust in the air and they were knocked around by uh, molecules. Mm. So people began to believe in atoms and many of the theories of that time were based on the atoms but uh, it took a while. And then in the 20s quantum theory was invented and that explained the properties of atoms but being able to get from the properties of atoms to the properties of solids has taken us all this time and I'll talk about that uh, tomorrow. So the early 20th century was really the high point of when all this came about, but do you find that now that we're in the 21st century, discoveries are coming fast and furious? Yes, yeah. Discoveries about the fundamental nature of these systems and also applications in the sense that we can now start with very uh, precise models of what atoms do when you bring them together to make solids and then we can predict the properties of the solids before they're actually made and we can explain properties. Now that brings me to the next question. How has quantum theory changed the world around us since the beginnings? Okay. Well quantum theory is a little bizarre because it states that matter can be a particle or a wave. So you are a wave and there's a probability <laughs> that you're over in the Sheridan Hotel right now. Still it's asleep. A, still asleep, but there's a small probability. That most, is small. Most likely you're here. But these kinds of bizarre things cause people a lot of trouble getting used to the nature of quantum theory. Quantum theory deals in the probabilities and there are uncertainties. Einstein claimed that he spent more time worrying about quantum theory than he did about relativity. And he called quantum theory spooky. And the idea of probability didn't appeal to him. He said, God doesn't play dice with the universe. I've heard that quote, yeah. Okay, but he was wrong. And Bohr told him we should not tell God what to do. Because in fact, for every test of quantum theory, quantum theory has proven to be correct. So this is the way you, on a basic nature, you have to look at the universe and what's going on in, let's say, materials. It tells you why I can't put my finger through the table, it tells me why the table is hard, it tells me all about the materials that are being discussed here at this conference. And so it's a beautiful theory, but it's not compatible with how you feel about 
things in everyday life. Mm -hmm. So quantum theory developed in the 20s and was interpreted, but then it had to be applied. And applying it to atoms was really quite straightforward to some extent. And in fact, the studies of atoms enabled people to establish quantum theory. And that's because when you shine light on atoms, you get very, very sharp spectral lines. But when you go to solids, they're very broad. So it took a long time to really interpret the optical properties of solids. And now today we can, we understand, for example, in 1960, you, we didn't really understand the electronic properties of silicon. And as you know, silicon's the biggest business in the world and silicon makes all this possible. We've come a long way. A long way. Well, Marvin, thank you so much. Marvin Cohen, 2014 MRS Von Hippel Award winner. Congratulations on that, and enjoy the meeting this year. Thank you very much.